anybody wants an outline I, of a clinic talk that I have about how to defend against a, a prepare for a passing team, I'll be glad to send it to you. I, I've got it. You can have it. And, and it's a pretty nice, in fact, I'll just show it to you uh, if you if you want it. I, I was going to talk about this in a little different way. I think it, it, it presents itself a little bit better that way. But these are just some of the, the things that we would go through and we still go through I, that I think are important in, in, in preparing. And again, this is attitude type stuff, which I don't want to talk about anymore. And that's why I'm going to present it to you in a different way. The part of this that you may be interested in, more interested in, I, is there are fundamentals that are important in secondary play and linebacker play and drills on this sheet that you may be interested in that I usually talk about that I'm not going to talk about. I'm just showing you this so if you want it, you can get it from me. And there's an, I, I always coach the secondary for 20 years, so I had a page like this that's, that these were all the things that I thought it was a checklist. I also have a, a daily and a weekly checklist, uh, the different areas of things that uh, if you want a copy of this, that's the only reason I'm showing it to you. Give me a card or something afterwards, and I'll have some. I'll send it out to you, and you'll get it in a week or so. But I'm not going to approach it this way for you. I'm going to talk about, hopefully I'll tie this together for you. There's two real kind of coverages that I talk about that, that, I, that we think there really are in football. If you were coaching a quarterback, what do you tell the quarterback? There's a middle of the field safety or there isn't one, right? So to me, you have middle of the field coverage or you have split safety coverage. <coughs> All right, so what I'm going to talk to you about is middle of the field coverage first because I think that applies most to playing eight-man fronts, most to stopping the run, uh, and those types of things, uh, and the principles of it. And I'm going to present it in a way that, I, that hopefully will help you present it so that your players understand it as well uh, and, uh, and, and show you again why and this is how I present it to our players and I think they understand it that way and it's the same way I presented it to the players in Cleveland and you know you know they, they could understand it that way too and this is the first thing that I show them when we do a middle of the field we put in the middle of the field coverage now what are middle of the field coverages for me you can play three deep zone with strong rotation which I call cover three I, you can play sky support, cloud support, buzz support, which to me is a backer to the flat and the safety down in the hole. I, cover six is you can play weak rotation in the secondary, which is still what? Three deep zone with the middle of the field player, but now the safety is down to the weak side or the corner is down weak, or you buzz that side. You can play middle of the field coverage, which is man to man, man free. Cover one to me is man free right in the hole, which I think is the best coverage in ball. It's absolutely the best coverage in ball. They can't run the ball. The quarterback's got to throw the ball outside. You can't make any easy throws like when you play zone. Um, and it's a good coverage. And I'll talk to you about the coverage a little bit. But all three of those coverages completely tie together because they're all what? Middle of the field, middle safety. You got a guy in the middle of the field. So everything that you do is relative to the guy in the middle of the field. That's how we coach it. All right, now, this area right here that you see, of course, here's the ball. All right, this is the area that the free safety defends. Now, this field is drawn up as a college field is today. They didn't move the hash marks in high school, did they? Did they move the hash marks in high school when they moved them in college? So your field's a little bit different, but the principle's still the same. The pro field is different in this, too. I had to adapt back to this. But just to get, give it to you, it's seven yards to here, it's nine yards to here. <coughs> Okay, these hash marks got moved a couple yards, so this is your hash mark right here at 17 yards, which is where that, which is easier on your field to apply these principles that I'm going to give you than it is on ours. All right, but everything you teach a corner in terms of leverage as a deep third player should be because of the relative distance that he is from the middle of the field safety. So the seams don't get too large between the safety and the corner. In other words, the first thing that I'll give a corner is I say, all right, this is your divider right here. One yard top of the numbers, 10 yards from the sidelines if the ball's in the middle of the field. What does that divider mean to that guy? It means if the guy's outside that divider, you should be inside technique because what is it created? It's created a big dif distance between you and the safety. So there's a seam in there, correct? If he's got a short split, he's inside your divider, what technique should you play against him? 
play outside technique and play it outside relative to your divider. What does that mean? If he's five yards inside your divider, line up two yards outside of him. How close is he to the safety? He's real close to the safety, right? So if he runs deep and down the middle of the field, who's going to be there? The safety. Where's he going to beat you at? Outside. Correct? So it all starts with that. And that divider, guys, for your corner play, to me, runs all the way down the field. What does that mean? What if a guy stems? Let's say this, this line right here is my divider. I'm a receiver. The ball is in there, and I line up right smack dab on this divider, this line that's running right down the middle of the floor. And that corner plays me outside technique. If I stem outside, what should that corner be? Where should he be now? Inside technique, right? Because I've now done what as a receiver? Extended the distance between me and the safety. If I line up way out here, where would the corner line up? Inside. What if I stem off the ball like this, where should the corner be? Outside. That's what I mean by position relative to the divider. Now, that sheet that I put up there before about how to get ready for a passing team, there's a whole section on position maintenance technique which you gotta teach a kid how to do what? Adjust horizontally and vertically right, to play in the secondary. You gotta be able to do that. Now, if you, if you, all you guys still believe in teaching backpedal probably, right? I, I don't very much, but I'll, I did for 20 years before I learned better. But anyway, if you're gonna backpedal, I, obviously, you do it just like you run. You keep your knee, you wait, wait over the balls of your feet, you want your knees bent here, and you're gonna work your arms exactly like this. But to me, to adjust horizontally out of a back pedal is very, very important. Now, everybody can do what? Teach the guy to turn his butt like this. I, I think when you adjust outside, it's okay to turn your butt. When you adjust outside. When you adjust inside, if you turn your butt, you block your hips to the middle of the field, and sometimes you put yourself in a bad position and tie yourself up. In other words, if the ball's in here and, and I want to stem outside, I think it's okay to do this because I end up doing what? Playing in a half turn, still eyes here, receiver here, I can see everything, I see number two. All right, when I do this and turn my hips inside and get in a position like this, I'm not in a very good position, right? I got my hips locked out to the inside, I can't get open to the middle of the field, I really am better off rolling over and turning my back to the quarterback, so how should I, what's the best way for me to adjust in there? Tack, heel the toe like this and stay square. Does everybody see that? And most kids will have a tough time doing it. This is how I teach it real quick. They got me with so many wires here. All right, it's just, I'm gonna stand here like this and I say you slide. Slide here to there, here to there, here to there. You need to go over here, just start the other way. Right like this, don't cross over. Just take heel, toe, heel, toe, almost like going to waltz. All right, now, we can talk about this theory, but you backpedal against Willie Galt, he's, you can't defend anything. He's too fast, he runs by you, no matter what cushion you keep. You keep enough cushion to keep him from running by you, can't run any patterns, catch any balls short, but he runs out there and stops and you're 15 yards away from him. Now, how can you play closer to, to a receiver? Play him like this in a half turn because I'm already half turn. I don't have to have transition from back pedal to running. I'm already in a half turn. And I can adjust in here like this, keep leverage on a guy and play in a half turn just as well as anything else except one thing that I always have to do is when I'm in a half turn and the guy disappears to my back, what do I need to do? Can't always do this. Have to be able to roll over like this, <coughs> which is a faster turn I've been out of a back pedal. And we've all coached all of our life, back pedal, man, I'm gonna get killed up here. Back pedal and tramp, plant, point, knee over the toe and accelerate out of the back pedal and all that. And I'm telling you, you can do this like this and do this faster and be closer to the guy in the meantime. Why can you be close to the guy? Because you don't have to ever go into transition to turn. But. Anyway, let's get back to this. But that's the position maintenance that I'm talking about. Horizontal and vertical positioning on the field, but it all starts with the middle of the field safety for a corner. 
the distance relative to the safety, how you keep leverage on a player. All right, now, if we're going to play three deep zone, that doesn't change. I don't care what the rotation is. As long as the corners have the deep third, I don't care who the deep third player is, that relative position should be the same on that guy to use the middle of the field safety. If we're playing man free, what position do you think the corner should be on the guy? If I'm a corner playing man free, could you stand up a second? We're going to use this as a divider again. The ball's in there. The ball's in there. He's the corner. If I'm in here, where should this guy be on me? Get turned to run. Okay. All right, that's a divider. That's outside the divider. This is inside the divider. I'm closer to the safety now, right? So where do I want to be? Outside. Since I have a middle of the field safety helping me, how can I play this guy? What, what should be my vertical position on the guy? High shoulder, low shoulder, even shoulder. That, that's how I teach. Well, if I got a safety right there, why should I have to stay high on the guy? All I have to defend now is the seven, and I'm outside of them. So if I run to the seven, you can jump back up and cut me off anyway, because you're outside, right? All right, now, I got help in there. So if you're inside a divider, I'm going to play you what? Outside and low. OK, here's the corner again. Now, if I release out here, the safety's in there, right? And the ball's in here. I release out here. What position do you think this guy needs to keep on me now? What would you say? Inside, because of the distance from the safety, but, and high. Why? Because you're going to keep me cut off because there's no help over the top. So when I say, let me be the receiver, okay. the defensive back. Okay. All right, you take off down the sidelines. I'm going to jam you, and I'm going to keep you cut off because I can control your speed now. Run. I can control your speed. I got you cut off. I'm high shoulder. Right? I got no help here. All I got to do is worry about the guy running or what? Come back. Right? So for that corner, that principle of how to play three deep zone to me is very important because it's all relative to what guy? The middle of the field safety. So if I don't, and, 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 and the principle is the same in all coverages for the corner. If you're in phase, I always tell guys, if you're in phase with the receiver, which to me... I'm talking about your high shoulder, which way are you Back to the ball. Because if I'm high shoulder, I'm in phase. All right, stand up again. If I'm, we're running down the field, I'm in phase right now, right? If I'm even with the guy or high, I'm in phase. So I become the receiver. Now I feel and squeeze the guy and look for the ball like this. Okay? Now, if I can make a play on the ball, I make it. I use this hand, most people don't teach this, but I use this hand while I'm looking to do this and this. And I'm always going to get the first rake with this hand on the throw. And then do this if I can't get the ball. All right, now, if I'm out of phase on the guy, then I'm going to play the ball through the man. I got beat where I got no help. I, I'm low shoulder on the guy, right? I'm not going to look for the ball now like this. I'm going to play the ball, eyes and hands through the guy, look for the ball, drop your eyes. I'm going to play where his, he goes with the ball. All right, that's out of phase. And, and playing the ball for defensive backs or linebackers, the first thing I ask them when they play the ball is, were you in phase with the guy? Why did you look that way? You were out of phase. So you didn't play the ball correctly. All right. So. The principle for the corners, everybody understand it. Now, now let's just get into bump and run here because this is how I teach stuff, guys, by principle. All right, I'll be the defensive back now right here. All right, he's the receiver, ball's in there. I'm the left corner on defense. All right, that guy split right on the divider. What should my technique be? Full press if I'm going to play bump and run on that guy. Why? He's got, he's got a normal split. I don't know if he's going inside or out. I'm not going to uncover him to the inside because then he buys grass and gets on top of me outside. I'm going to protect myself there. If he goes inside, I run him off the plane. I can play him low shoulder, so I play him full press. A little wider split. Takes a wider split. Doesn't have as much room to run outside, get on top. He's not going to run a nine. So now I'm going to take a slightly inside position on him. Right? Because the worst thing that can happen is give him an inside release outside of the divider. Safety can't make the play. I can't make the play either. All right, now he moves in. 
takes a short split. Where am I going to play him now? Slightly outside, right? The guy's buying grass to run a nine. So I'm going to put myself in good position. If he releases in here, what's he got? Even if I don't hit him. What does he got? He's into the safety, right? Safety's got to make the play from the numbers the numbers in the middle of the field. All right, then I'm going to offhand jam him as he goes by watching his stand right here on the divide. All right, I'm watching his hips. He comes off the ball, release around me one way or the other. All right, then I'm going to offhand jam him this way. Whatever way he turns his hips and gives up the angle, I'm going to take the offhand. Now, if he walks up on top of me like, like he just did, I'm going to pop his ass before it ever happens. All right, but I'm just saying, he's going to, he's, he, as a receiver, he's going, to, he's going to look to not get hit. So he's going to move around me. All right, now, and I'm thinking strong with the inside hand because he's probably going to outside release. Now, release this way. All right, and I'm right like this. And I slide into the guy, offhand jam, slide into him, and you want to jam him from the tip to the, in front of the shoulder. All right, then come off and face with the guy relative to the safety. So if we back up a step so I can do that, all right, if he releases in here, I jam. Now, when I come off this, where do I want to be? Low, right? Right here, running in. I'll we'll play him like this. This hand's going to hook him, and hook here, don't cover the shoulder, all right? If he runs back to the seven, I'm going to jump back up on him like this and play him here. All right, now on the seven to play the ball, this on him. I'm not in, I'm in vertical phase with him. I'm not in horizontal phase. So if I play the ball like this, he's going to catch the ball because I, I can't get, but I'll play the ball now like this because I'm not in horizontal phase, not because I'm not in vertical phase. All right, now, the guy runs outside him, we'll keep him cut off, right? Keep him cut off. Stay high on him, keep him cut off. Now, what you read when you're playing close, close coverage is you read the guy's hips. You look for the guy to run down the field, and when the guy goes like this, which way am I going to cut? I'm going to cut this way, or I'm going to fall down. I, I can't hardly go that way. Now, speed cuts are hard to read, but they're all short, right? So you read the guy's lower body. You try to get on the same foot that he's on, and when that hip rolls through for him to plant, where are you? You're on the same foot running the pattern with him. When he goes like that, you go like that too. And that's what you try to teach him. But anyway, I'm not really here to totally teach you bump and run, just the principle of position and how to use a safety. And that's how you use a safety in 3D uh, or regular coverage. Now, there's one other principle to 3D coverage that I think is important. All right, and that's the seams on the field. When you're playing three deep, there's a place, and everybody probably does this. You all probably have the free safety run, fishtail in the middle of the field, run two guys down the field about right there outside the hash marks, and throw the ball, right? Break on the ball drill. Everybody do that? I've done it all my life. All right, now, if they run double seam on that safety in the game, and nobody keeps those guys from running in that spot, it's a break on the ball drill for him. All right, now the three things in zone defense that we teach our players is number one, you drop to an area, you reroute the receiver. Reroute the receiver. Number two, you match the pattern. And I'll, I'll talk to you about that. With zone integrity if we're playing zone. And the last thing you do is break on the ball. Now there's three kind of pass defense that you can play. You can play man to man, which we talked about a little bit. You can play zone, which I just gave you our principle of zone, and you can play pattern match, which means you're going to match the pattern after the pattern distribution. Now, you watch these basketball teams play, I watch Bobby Knight's team play. They play man to man. Sometimes they play zone match man, though, too. Right? And sometimes, some teams play a 3-2 zone. Michigan State won a national championship with Magic Johnson there. They never played it down a man-to-man -man a whole basketball season or anything else. They just played that one zone. All right, now, but my point on this diagram is, is you cannot let people, when you're playing three deep zone, run free in that part of the field. Those are the two seams. So we will always have a player drop to the seam to reroute the seam if somebody's running in it. Example. All right, let's put the ball up right here. I can't draw this totally to, all right, if this tight end runs like that down the field and the strong safety is three by five, four by four, however you play him, and he drops right there and that guy's running down the field, what, what should the safety's got to reroute? He's got to make him run out of that area before he goes any further. 
and he's got to do it at 10 yards. Because you heard me talk about in playing bump and run, you keep the receivers cut off. When you play zone pass defense and they're running vertical, you keep them cut off too. And if you're an underneath defender, you stay on top of them. Because if you reroute them early and jam them early, what happens? Well, I'm the strong safety here. This man right here is a tight end all day. All right, now, I'm lined up right here like this at four yards deep. That guy takes an outside release and runs in the seam. Come on. He runs in the seam. I jam his ass right here at three or four yards. What happens? As soon as he gets back on top of me, where can he run? Wherever he wants to run. Right back in the seam, right? Same thing when we get to cover two. Now, if he takes that same deal, and I drop back here to 10 yards, and I'm standing in the seam, and I rewrite him out of the seam at 10 yards, then by the time the ball's thrown, he'll never be back in the seam. He'll either be into the safety or into the corner, one or the other. Right? So you got your underneath cover people, and they're rerouting, you have to keep the guys cut off to 10 yards, which means they stay on top of them. They have the, the receivers have to run through them to get where they want to go. All right, so in this coverage here, we are not going to let anybody run in the seam. Now, you can usually tell your players they don't have to worry about the seam as soon as there's two backs in the backfield because there's no double seam. And if there's no double seam, the safety can play because he should always read two to that side anyway to know if he's coming in the seam. Now, what would I tell this safety right here all right, if I was preparing for a passing team? If the number two receiver runs vertical like that, there's probably three patterns that it can be. Maybe it's different in high school, but this is what I've been exposed to. First of all, you get this pattern right here, which I call what? That's a smash. Okay? You can get the tight end coming up the seam, and this guy running an out route, which I call pull. All right, and you can get the tight end. Well, let's just put the tight end in the seam and the outside guy running that, and that's a what? Double seam. Right? And a tight end might do that if it's a middle read. He might hook it up or whatever. But basically, how many more different routes are you going to get other than these three basic ones with the guy running in the seam? There's going to be a few, but that's where it all starts. Double seam, seam and out, smash. Right? In most ball, most ball that I play. So right now, this guy's got it down to what? Three things he got to defend as soon as the guy runs in the seam. And that's how, that's how we teach pattern matching, too, based on what the second receiver does and all that type of thing. All right, now, let me just, before I go into cover two, let me just talk about, I, I've talked about this pattern matching, or mentioned it a couple times. Let me just talk to you about what I mean by what I'm saying there. All right, now, also, everybody, and, and, and I've been on staffs with at least Bill Belichick, Al Groh, Jim Bates, Rick Venturi, Woody Woodenhofer. Five guys, and George Perlis was too, six, that all have been coordinators in pro football that I've coached with on staff. And, and, a lot, and four of those guys coached with me in Cleveland. But it doesn't make any difference. We got a flat player over here. We got a hook player over here or a hook curl player. We got a hook player over here. All right, we got a curl flat player over here. Okay, because we're rushing four right now. All right, we got a deep one third player. We talked about some of his players. We got a middle of the field player. We haven't talked about him yet. We got a deep one third player here. All right, now, if those are the players, and everybody thinks I'm crazy on this, but this is the way I teach it, and, and you may not need to teach it this way, all right, but I put that on the board, and we teach cover three and cover six, all right, and buzz and everything else that goes with it right at the same time. Say, so how can you play all these coverages? It's three deep zone, guys. However we put the parts in, make no difference, whether it's cloud, sky, buzz, whatever it is. Because here's the positions and here's what you relate to. All right, now, these two guys that drop over here, I don't care who they are, whether it's a safety or will or whatever, you're dropping through the seam. You're dropping when the ball's on the hash mark. We make him the seam guy in college because it's too far for him. The ball's never on the hash in pro. You're relating to number one. You're relating to number two after the pattern distribution. You're relating to number three. You're relating to number two. Don't let one catch it outside and run with it. All right, that's what you're relating to. 
All right, here's your drop point. All right, this guy's got to reroute. Both these guys could have to reroute whether the ball's on the hash or in the middle of the field. It's impossible for the flat dropper to reroute when the ball's on the hash. It'll be impossible for you too. So you give it to this guy, but you don't have to worry about it unless this guy's up on the line, probably. All right, now, what do I mean by you relate to one, two, and, and three and all that stuff? After the pattern distribution, after you drop, and you're, you two guys are tied to a string on how you drop and expand, but you're limited to how much you can expand and how much you can contract in that zone based on where the players are. So we'll just take a very simple pattern here where he does that, he does that, he does that, he does that, and he does that. Now after the pattern distribution, who's one over here? Who's two? Who's three? Who's two? Who's one, right? So this safety drops to the seam. Is there anybody to reroute in the seam? Nobody to reroute? You're inside out on the outside receiver 10 yards deep. You hold on two for as long as you can. All right, this guy here drops to the hook and he's gonna stack the hook at 10 yards. And he'll take it back to the ball if he has to. And that's number three, which is that check down. These two guys on here are one, two match. This guy's going through the seam, through number one. He's expanding with one. Two goes out. I go to the new two, which is right here. And that's how we would match that pattern on that side. All right, so everybody's going to stack up on these receivers. Now, who's vulnerable here? This guy right here. What are we going to defend in, 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 in this defense? The middle of the field. We're not going to let him throw the ball vertical down the middle of the field. They're going to throw the ball in the flat. In the flat, short in the flat, outside. That's where they're going to throw it. They're not going to throw it in the middle. So we're not going to run out and defend this guy and let this guy catch the ball. Now, eventually, this guy will get stretched out of here. But this corner playing man clue technique, keys number two, no two in the seam, what's he do? squeeze one man to man. So he's playing like cover one. Both corners would be squeezing these guys man to man. You got to run through with the flat players when you play like that. Now, what if we called three buzz and this guy here was a safety? This guy here would be the backer. This guy here would be a backer. This guy here would be a backer, right? Would it make any difference how they match the pattern? Different guys, interchangeable parts. If you're playing sky, this guy's a safety. What if we play cover six, three deep zone with weak rotation? Who's the safety? That guy does the same thing the Will just did. This guy now becomes the Will, which was the Mike in cover three. The Mike now becomes the what? Who was the Sam who plays the front side hook? And who is this guy dropping to the flat? The Sam, who's playing the flat just like he did in three bus. Same pattern match. So you just teach them all and you can play whatever you want, right? Now, we've talked about how to play every position in three deep zone underneath both ways. Now, does anybody have any questions? About, and we play patterns, guys. I mean, we play patterns, just like I'm sure you see this pattern, probably out of slot, probably with the ball in the hash, not like I'm going to draw it up. Everybody see that in high school ball? Now, how should that safety play this? Drops to the seam, there's nobody in the seam. He's got to start expanding. How should he expand? I call that a sail technique. I don't see very many people teach it. I don't see it played this way. I, we played it this way in Cleveland. I know a lot of people that do in pros, but if that was a corner playing cover two, how would you want him to play that? If I was a corner in cover two playing that, I would play it right like this. Ball's in there. Tight ends up here, guy in the flats right there, and then I would expand like this with my belly button pointed to the upfield part of the zone, and then I would slow turn break to the short part of the zone, right? But we all teach the safety to do what? Vision point back like this, then start to expand like this and turn his back to the high part of the zone, right? So he has to play what? A lot deeper because he can't see the guy, so he gets a lot further away from the guy in the flat. All right, now, and I'm a stupid hillbilly, so you guys, that don't, you can laugh if you want, but if I'm the strong safety and I back up and get in the vision point and go through the seam and all that stuff that I've been talking about, and I see the tight end coming, it's three out strong flood, it's going to be the sail route, I come out of here like this, and as soon as I see that happening, I take the safety and play them the same way as I play the corner. Flip them over and play a sail technique. Does everybody see what I'm talking about? I can do it better over here. I'm the safety. I come out. I come out. This man right here is a tight end. 
This guy's a guy going in the flat. I'm coming out like this, like a safety. As soon as I see that, I can go like this and start running. Or I can flip over like this and play just like the corner would and split the zone. But from top down, point at top. Anytime you play top down, which is how you always got to play, you should always tell the guy to play facing the top. Right? That's the way I tell him anyway. OK, but that's the principle then of three deep zone with everybody but the middle of the field player. Yes? Is your free safety, are you just lining them in the middle of the field, or are you adjusting no. them according to the position of the, wide, uh, the depth of the, or the width of the wide out? I tell the free safety, if you could line up right smack dab in the middle of where the wide outs are, then that's where you that's line up. If there's a wide out here and a wide out here, and you could line up 10 to 12 yards deep, 12 yards for most of them, right in the middle of where those two guys are, that's where you should be. All right, but then we d redefine the field. What I use for the safety a lot is this is the goal post, right? When the ball's on the hash over here, I, I really tell the safety you're playing this, this is the middle of the field for you. All right, because if the quarterback drops back, it's hard for him, and, and, and I didn't go over this, but if the ball's on this hash, this one yard from the numbers goes three yards. So basically, you just cut a couple yards of the field off because the quarterback's got to throw it 50 yards to get it there. Okay, so you defend a little less, so everybody cheats, all right, and then this divider cheats, and this divider actually pushes out a little bit too because it's how, how far the ball can go to get there. All right, now, the middle of the field safety, depending on where the ball is, I don't think he should ever line up inside the hash. Okay, and I'll, we always tell him to line up in the tackle box, even if it's slot formation and no width weak. I don't like to take the middle of the field safety past the front side tackle. If it's a pro formation, he should line up between the ball and the weak side tackle. Very seldom do we take him beyond the ball, unless it would be too tight, no width on one side. Does that answer your question? Okay. We, I've, I've always read defensive backs through the line. All right, so he would read through the uncovered lineman to the ball. But I think the linemen show you running past faster than anything else. And you know, we always teach the same principles that we get a primary support, a secondary support, which is a run pass guy too, and a cutback guy on everything, and an alley player. And the safety in three deep zone is usually the alley player both ways. Now, what I teach the two guys in here, coach the running backs, right? All right, now if you can cut it back as the runner, then I want the safety to attack the line the same way. Flat step and roll and come inside out on the ball like this with my shoulder square. I see free safeties doing this, getting to the middle. All right, then it's the inside role play, and they turn their shoulders like this and come back at the ball. And even though they're inside out, their hips are pointing this way. Can the guy cut back on them? Yeah, so you attack the line of scrimmage the same way that the runner does. Now, if I'm a tailback and it's outside role play, sprint play, I take the ball like this. Am I going to cut it back? No. It's almost stretch out, right? I might stop and cut it back, but I'm not trying to bend it back this way. So now, as a safety, I should take the, my, my shoulders are the same. I shuffle, and I flat step, and I'm coming out at the line of scrimmage the same way you are as, as a runner. I tell you, you're the tailback line 11, 12 yards deep. But we key the lineman, the uncovered lineman, for run pass as well as the ball. And then what you really got to work hard, the downside of that is, is the run it play pass. You know, the old Boomer Esiason, you know, giving it one of these shots where he fakes the ball hard and the linemen come off hard and all that stuff, and then he comes up and bombs it to you, bombs it to him. Okay. All right, does anybody have any questions about? All right, you give me the high sign for 10 minutes. All right, now, what I wanted to talk to you guys about. All right, with a couple more principles about this stuff here is
You've got the middle of the field principle, right? All right, now here's when I like to play middle of the field coverage. If they have two backs in the backfield, all right, you might as well play an eight-man front, right? I mean, so you always ought to be playing middle of the field coverage. If they're in trips formation and they're overloading you, all right, there's no sense in really playing split safety coverages. Doesn't do you any good. It really doesn't. I mean, you got heavy sets. All right, now, two by two is a time where when you split the safeties in the coverage, it really helps you because when, when they get that old principle, they're like this. All right, now, this, this to me is the pattern that kills three deep zone. That's it, double seam. All right, now you're gonna coach so hard to keep these guys out of the seam, you'll always give up this pattern, or at least we do, when we're playing cover three. All right, so when they get two by two, that's when you cover two, the quarter, quarter, half stuff that people talk about, quarter, quarter on both sides. You know, those types of things to me should be what you try to apply. All right, but I mean, this is just very general here now. All right, but the best coverage for all the way around is, and, and I don't know why more people don't play it in lower levels, but cover one is the absolute, and it's a simple, simple, simple coverage. All right, now in cover one, you'd line up exactly like cover three. You can play the corners bumper off. You still have a middle of the field safety who is free in the middle of the field. All right, let's just line it up like we're going to play a 4-3 or an over front all right, to play it. All right, but basically the Will and the Sam and the Mike is free. These two guys have these two guys outside technique man to man. This guy has the tight end, the strong safety. This guy's free in the middle of the field. He's got him. He's got him. Okay, now, any, this guy's still playing sky support just like cover three. All right, if this guy runs across the field, the mic will take him and the safety will become the free guy. Okay, the other rule for the mic is he always has a second back. You don't have to play it this way, but that's the way we play it. In other words, if they both went this way, who has this guy? That's the second back, right? So Mike has him, he becomes a rat. If they both went this way, who's a free guy? The Will's a free guy, Mike takes the second back, Sam takes the first back. Don't play it in and out, just second back rule, okay? All right, the safety's got the tight end, but our safety would say sky, rat. What does rat mean? Rat means I got the tight end, but I'm in a safety position on him. I'm gonna run support and I'm gonna stay here. If he runs across the field, I can't cover him. Free backer, you gotta cut me off of him and take him, and I'll take your place. That's what rat means. All right, so you got the whole formation leverage. You got everything in good shape. This guy runs across the field. He takes him, you become that guy, right? What if it's flow pass on the same deal? Let's say they're in this and they flow pass. Who, who has the, these two guys? Who's the free guy? Who has the second back? He's the free guy, right? Now the tight end drags across. Who's got him? <coughs> Will's got the cut. The safety comes up in the hole. When that guy runs that, he, the corner gets double help. Got a middle of the field safety and a hole player. Got a hole player and a middle of the field player all the time. Can't defend the middle of the field any better than that, right? All right, now, how do you adjust the coverage out? You can do it two ways on backfield breaks. I've just told you everything you need to know about the coverage. Talked a little bit about playing bump and run. All right. Now, if we just call cover one period, all right, the wheel has to take split inside breaks. Split inside breaks, not the wide outs, backfield, okay? If you get a tight end side break, the safety takes them, and then the Sam takes the tight end. Just slides over and takes the tight end. Then the Mike and the Will have the back and the hole, whichever way the back goes. And the other guy has a hole, and you cut the guy off. And we call it funnel when our linebackers play three on two, and if we got a one back set lined up, I don't care how we're playing the rest of it, and these three guys had these two in the hole, we'd just call that funnel. And for this guy to get help on the slot on the crosser, he has to call Rat. Rat tells the linebackers that guy's in the funnel. So if he runs across the field, you're cutting him. The whole player's cut him. Take him off. All right, now what kind of technique would I play on that slot guy right there? You got a middle of the field safety, right? From what we talked about before. 
I'd play that guy outside technique all the way. If he run across the field, what would happen? Play that happen. He'd take him. He's a free guy. He hooks up. He's got him. Who takes him? He cuts him. He comes back in the hole. You end up with that double net. Right? Level the coverage off however you want to do it. That's cover one. Now, if we play one alert and you never want a linebacker, you never want the linebackers to cover anybody but the tight end and the backs in a one back set, then we play one alert then the safeties do this. Let's say you're getting this, like this. Safety's got this, free safety's got this. These three guys have what? These two guys. This guy goes in motion to here. If we call one alert, it means that the tight end and the remaining back are always taken by the backers and all breaks are taken by the safety. The safeties would spin and this guy would now take this guy. This guy would become the middle of the field player. These guys would slide away from that and have those two guys in their hole. That's just another way to do it if you don't want them to take any, any breaks off of that. All right, now, one other thing I wanted to talk to you about, which I missed, all right, was when we were in this pattern match and stuff, now we're back to zone. All right, every boot and every flow pass, you should have rules for in every coverage that you have. Okay, now, first of all, I'm just going to go on flow pass. All right, if we're playing three deep zone in this flow pass, all right, we're, we're going to match the pattern and flood the coverage. Will's got number four in first crosser or first crosser. All right, does backside corner have anybody in the seam? No, can't. He's man to man on that guy. All right. If this guy runs across the field, who's got him? Will's going to take him. Take him man to man. All right. Once we get flow pass, this guy's on one, two, and three. We're, we're playing like pattern match now. Okay. This corner here is going to be man squeezed based on his divider, and you still got the safety in the middle of the field. All right. So when all this happens right here, all right, when we get a crosser, in, in three deep zone, we're going to robot the weak hook player. Will takes the first crosser. He robots. We got one going back, so these guys don't play one and two anymore. They play two and three like they always would because one went back in flow path. So we would actually robot this guy to the hole, and he would look for the X or Z dig because we're in a what here? Three level vertical pattern by the offense. So if we play regular levels on defense, we can't win because they're going to high low our players. We got two levels of players, they got three levels of players. We can't win. So, what do we do with it? We squeeze this. We got a middle of the field level of player to take this. We got a second level player to take that. The SAM and the safety have the check downs and underneath the Z. So, when this guy stops here, the SAM is going to take him. When this guy comes out, the safety is going to take him. We end up man matching it. All right, now, if we had a boot on, if you had a boot, and you ran the common boot with him in the flat, him running a go, him coming across, faking it hard this way, coming out here, that. All right, now, every zone coverage we have, flat defender on the side of the boot has a guy in the flat. Two hook players have a tight end across, sandwiched. Strong safety is underneath one, match the underneath pattern, don't get outflanked. Okay, so how would we take this pattern? If we're in cover three, Mike's a hook player, Sam's a hook player, safety's a flat player. Who's got the first of the flat side of the boot? Will takes it. What do these guys do? He just runs to get on that side of the tight end. He runs to stay on this side of the tight end. What's the safety do? Underneath the Z, match the next guy checking down, don't get outflanked. Corner's got nobody in the seam, he's man to man. Corner got nobody in the seam, he's man to man. Free safety's in the middle of the field. Take the pattern man to man. Boots, waggles, all that stuff. We just run and take the pattern. Flow passes, run and take the pattern. We 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 don't because we got the guys on the edge most of the time. But if I was going to second contain anybody on this, it would probably be this guy. But if they don't have a guard pulling, you really shouldn't need second contain because you should teach your your guys to relative contain to run to the flat. Okay? All right, now, one other thing. You kicking me out yet? Getting ready to. Just about ready to. All right, now, let me just show you the simple principle of, you know, you got two by two now. Here's the ball. You got two by two. 
All right, now, as soon as you get two by two, I talked about plan cover two. I can't get into it. We don't have time. Where you got the corner rolled up, jamming the flat, safety plan the half. This guy now, when you play two deep zone, you reroute guys to the seam. You're defending in the middle of the field. So where you rerouted this guy running this pattern out of there, you reroute him to there now because what's that do to you? It gets the safety leverage on the middle read, right? At 10 yards, you want that guy in the seam, inside out, like that. All right, now, you got cover two. Now, if you play quarter, quarter, you back this guy off. You play quarter, quarter, you read two, you reroute him. You totally match the pattern. Now, I call that box. All right, if you wanted to play cut, then what we would do in cut is this guy would play like cover two. He plays the half wide. And you tell all the inside players, you have your guy inside and across the field. If he runs the flat, cut the one. So if they run this pattern here, what happens? You trap the flat with him, he runs and walls that guy off. If this guy runs down the seam, what's he do with him? I'm sorry, let's go back up here. If you're gonna cut, cut means if your guy runs inside or up the field, you take him. If he runs the flat, you cut the one. They do this. I mean, you got that guy now and you got a half guy over the top. It's like playing cover five, five under man, two deep, except you take him after the pattern distribution. All right, now, if this guy, number two, runs up the field, what's the will do? Carries him, right? If he runs inside or up the field, you carry him. Corner jams and plays the flat. There's no smash rule on this. He has to take the seven, safety's on top. He's got that. But, but if you just play cut, box, and cover two zone against two by two, play three deep principles, and there's a little bit more to it than what I explained to you today, against two backs and trips. And trips, we would always play like flood coverage if there's no four week, and we call that Mabel. In other words, Mabel, we're, we're flooding the coverage over and matching just like I talked about flow pass. All right? Hey guys, I, I, I'm really sorry, but these guys that have these clinics, 50 minutes, it's not enough time. Thanks. Well, guys, uh, I'd like to make most of the time when I do this, when we get going, we're rolling pretty good. But at the same time, we like to do it as informally as possible. I want everybody to feel like um, I'm just one of the guys at your school and we're talking ball. And if you have a question, please stop and ask. If you would like to, for me to uh, answer a question about something that's a little bit different than even what we're talking about, I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, first of all, I'd like to let each and every one of you know that you know, Michigan State's not that far away from here, probably three and a half or four hours, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, it's our philosophy, my philosophy and our staff's philosophy that we would like to give back any way that we can to the people that help develop our program, which I think the high school coaches, uh, wherever they are, certainly do that. Uh, I think you guys do the best job of coaching uh, of anybody at any level. So therefore, we'd like to give back to you. I've been coaching this game for 22 or 23 years now uh, and have never invented one idea, one philosophy, uh, or one technique. Some player or some coach somewhere along the line gave me the idea to do it that way. And we've always been very open about trying to help and develop professionalism and professionals in this profession. So uh, if you ever want to come and visit us, don't hesitate. We'd love to have you. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about, guys, is attitude development of a team, of a defensive team, whatever. And I think this is very, very important. And I think you need to know that, that I've given this talk to the Mid-American Conference, 